recording in progress. Yeah. I did it. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Frightening yeah. Frauen. We are weird today. Hey, look, we're both redheads. Yeah. If you're on YouTube, you can see we're wearing our Halloween costumes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lee's just being Lee. That's what Lee normally looks like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's variable but it's always kind of in this ballpark and if you don't know who i am i am part of the chick from the red flags music video and this is really bothering me i'm taking out my lip ring um <laughs> it keeps clinging against my teeth um i'm part of her costume when she's wearing her little mad scientist coat and i made a couple videos today but i have her other side with the red dress that i'm going to do later nice I might not keep my sunglasses on all day. <laughs> I wear my sunglasses at night. Oh, is it not going to let us put that in here? <laughs> <laughs> I think it could be less than a few seconds, then you're okay. Oh, so, yeah. How, how was your week? Busy? Yeah. Yeah. Just moving is always a lot. It doesn't, you know, it's just always, it's always a lot. I got gloves on. Woohoo. Um, like you could commit some murders. <laughs> and the facial recognition might not work. Exactly. So I have the sunglasses on and a lot of so, contour. So the AI facial recognition can recognize you with sunglasses or with a mask on. Like the, the, you know, I was listening to a, a podcast about that the other day uh, from this security person who was talking about the the AI facial recognition software that's out there and the fact that like, you know, we kind of associate like evilness with like Google and Facebook, but they actually started working on that tech in like 2010, 2011. They went, you know what? We're not going to put this out there. We're not going to be the ones to do that. They actually made the right decision. And then this other company came along and went, we don't give a fuck <laughs> and just started being like hey cops you want to like look up some people and so like the wrong people have been put like in holding and stuff while they have to figure out like oh that person just looks like that other person and stuff I was like gonna that say that because one of my kids can get into my phone with the facial recognition and i'm like okay so <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, so the you know it's it's not a perfect thing, and there's only a couple of states that have any sort of like per, like laws that you could like like California is one of them where you can contact the company and be like remove me from your database. Whether or not they do it is a whole other thing, but yeah, just you know, like how on Twenty Three and Me you have to opt in to be part of the stuff for them to be able to it's not necessarily for you but for people to find people you're related to that committed crimes. yeah, yeah. i'm I, like okay I with that opt in. i opted in me yeah me too <laughs> if you do crime you you do the time well because you most of them are <laughs> like assault like sexual assault crimes and yeah that they're using it for and cold cases that involved um assaults and so yeah if you murdered someone or assaulted them, you do the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They don't usually look up like dumb stuff like stealing or, or whatever. No. So no. I did yeah. speaking of that, I had to do, go do my fingerprints again for my new job. And they're still the same fingers. So that's amazing. You didn't like grow new ones or anything? No. That's uh that's talent. It was my third time being fingerprinted in the last five years for jobs. <laughs> and I, one, I didn't even change like companies. I just changed positions and I had to get re-fingerprinted. I've only done it once ever. And that was when I became a notary. So oh, did I do it then too? Because I became a notary. Maybe it was four times then. <laughs> yeah. But this was like 2001. It was so it's all expired and mm -hmm. it's been a long time. I'm sure the tech is different too. Mine expires New Year's this year, or coming up New Year's. Yeah, I never turned my book in. Are you supposed, do you have to? 
it when it yeah when you stop being a notary or it expires or whatever like you're supposed to turn it in if you're not going to be using it anymore but mm -hmm. I only had two signatures on there I never like like I my boss at the time I was working for a law office and he paid for me to go become a notary and then he laid me off oh so I never really I just used it like one of my buddies crashed his motorcycle and I had him sign the affidavit or whatever it is you're supposed to sign to say that I'm not trying to rip off the insurance company. I just, you know, was an accident kind of thing. That's so. funny. Uh, working in the bank, I did a, almost every day. I had to notarize something and it was the fun. Some of them were the funniest things, but <laughs> I had one that they were notarizing a $5 loan. Wow. Yeah. That they're going to pay them back in a month. Yeah. I did a personal loan with a friend and we got it notarized. Just, you know, we didn't even go through the bank. We just, I just looked up like the legal stuff on how to like make a loan official so that like mm -hmm. she didn't get screwed over uh, as easily or whatever. And then, um, yeah, I just went to a notary and got signed, but it was, it was not for five dollars no I'm like five it was for a lot more <laughs> it cost you that much to drive here <laughs> right and then the signature costs more than that right no, so... we didn't charge so oh, okay. I I can I could charge outside of the bank but in the bank we didn't charge anyone who was a patron ah uh, member nice. it wasn't member it's I don't know what we call them customers yeah yeah we called them members at the credit union <laughs> Member, <laughs> member, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, members, goodness. members are cool. Yeah, they are cool. Uh, uh, <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's like a a yard person outside, and I have like tinted windows. And my son said you really can't see in during the day, but I'm just kind of imagining that maybe he could see in and be like uh, <laughs> seeing a clown that living just in a sitting trailer. in an RV. <laughs> Like with this, like all this setup and stuff, like, you know, I was like thinking about like, cause I have like this equipment, right. And like, like I'm a police, so I have like stuff, but it's all been given to me. Like, I, you know, I, uh, like my webcam and my microphone, my friend gave it to me um, as like a birthday gift as a, like a, uh, here, let me help you get started with your podcast kind of yeah. thing. And so it's, it's like, I have, I was just thinking about it the other day. Cause I was like people might look and be like, well, you have stuff, so you must have money. No. That's just, not how that works. I got people. I got people looking out for me. Same with like, you may have had money before, but that doesn't mean you have it now either because like me working and when the mortgage industry was great and everything, I had money and now and stuff. And I have a house that people who live outside of this area may think is expensive but it was not <laughs> <laughs> but it's people look at me and I feel so bad be, like even because like I, I got on food stamps for a little bit right now while I'm waiting for my job to start and I feel bad because I'm like I live in a six-bedroom house and like all this stuff but I lost my job like I need food <laughs> like it's right. I've been paying into it we pay into it we should be able to use it right and, I don't know. I just getting over it in my head of like how it looks to other people. That was like when I started the fundraiser, I felt that way. Cause like, but the thing is, is like all, all the stuff that I have that I did buy, like my car and my desk and stuff were all like investments. Like I've sold my house and I went, I'm going to put this much amount of money into my well being. So I'm going to have a reliable car. I'm going to have yeah. like an ergonomic desk. And, you know, and that was, that was a choice that I, that I made you know, but it I wasn't don't feel like those are luxury items. either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Having a desk that doesn't hurt like what? Yeah. yeah. And having a car that like, because my doctor's appointments are two hours away, mm -hmm. that doesn't hurt me when I'm sitting in it. Well, it hurts, but it doesn't hurt as much as other cars. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. Uh, my car broke. No. So my Why? only Okay, one of my cars is stuck in Colorado right now. I have to go get it. That's my Jeep. My Mercedes that I was about to sell, driving it home the other day, it just all of a sudden um, wasn't working. Like so, no power? 
No, it wouldn't go over 20 miles an hour. <laughs> so huh. I need someone to look at that. I couldn't, I can't, if it wasn't a Mercedes, I could fit, try to figure it out. <laughs> but yeah. I can't even that's check. Interesting. You can't even check fluid levels in it. You ha- it doesn't have a dipstick. You have to take it in for them to check the levels for you. So I'm like, is it overheating? Like it didn't look like it was overheating. I don't know. I was just driving it home. And yeah. so I only have my CRV, which is a manual and going to get my hip surgeries. I'm not even supposed to drive a manual for eight weeks after my surgery. So I don't know what to do. And I'm hoping that I can get the other car working. Um, I'm supposed to not drive for four weeks after surgery, but I have to, to go to work on Tuesday. Yeah. So, and we don't have public transportation here. And it's about to nobody. Be, oh. Maybe, maybe you can make friends with somebody at work that could pick you up or something. Yeah. I hope that would actually would probably be the best because then they could drop me off by the front so I could use my wheelchair because it's about to be icy outside and parking yeah. and all of that in a wheelchair is not going to be fun. Yeah. And then you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to be walking on that with crutches or anything like that. Just no. Ugh, I slipped and fell in the snow once and put my back out like real bad. It was like, took like weeks no. to sort it out. It was awful. I don't like it. I'm really glad it doesn't do that here because I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> it's really bad. It gets to, so the coldest it's gotten while I've lived here, which hit records. I don't know if it was an overall record or just record for that month or day, but negative 70 with the wind chill. And it was negative 40 something like actual temperature. That's like stay inside unless you have a heater to wear on your face so that your lungs don't freeze temperatures. We didn't get mail. Like they wouldn't, yeah. and I don't blame them. Like they said, if you want your mail, come to the post office and pick up your mail. Everything was closed for like two weeks. Yeah. It was so bad. And I did for the first time, I threw boiling water out and made snow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I've never heard of that. That's cool. It was, I have a video of it. I'll send it to you. But yeah, and it, it had cool. and it had to be boiling because it would freeze before you dumped it mm-hmm. out. Otherwise, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I went straight from boiling water, poured it in the coffee mug, and then like <laughs> threw it outside. It was just, no, uh, I yeah. tried to imagine like trying to keep keep the RV warm in that. Like you'd have to like wrap it up in something. That's... When my heat went out in Colorado was the first time during the year that it was in the negatives or the only time I think it was in the negatives. Um, and it was so cold and I felt like inside it felt better than outside. Cause there was no wind, but it was so cold. Like I had the kids and myself just all in the blanket together. And then I was pet sitting and I asked them if I could take my pets and my kids to their house because I didn't want us to die. Yeah. So, um, I brought, uh, the lizard's whole cage and everything like <laughs> their house <laughs> and just set the pets up in the bathroom and I was like you don't need to tip me just like let let us stay here for two the two days that I'm pet sitting for you. <laughs> <laughs> and my jeep stopped working or it uh, the battery went out because it got so cold and so my jeep wouldn't start either so I had to uber over there with my pets and like hope that they were okay with that wow it's kind of scary. I'm glad I'm glad you had somewhere to go though. But. Yeah. And I had my backup heater, so I had the propane, but I didn't have my car, so I couldn't go and refill the propane and it had just run out. And so I brought the tank with me and had the Uber person on the way back stop and have me run in and fill up. <laughs> it, they, I'm, I tipped really well because I was like, this I feel so bad right now. Yeah. And I'm thankful. <laughs> Yeah, adventures and coldness in RVs. Right. Yeah. I know it was like 50, what, 54 when I got up. It was probably colder than that before I got up because I got up at like nine because it was too cold before that. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to get up. I don't and then, uh, Yeah. Hey, those Snuggies though, they work really well. Mm-hmm. I want one. I don't have one. But I want I- one. I got it as a Christmas present for my ex mother in law a couple of years ago, and every year it comes out for winter time because it's 
you know, it's way too warm the rest of the year, but it's perfect in the winter. When I lived over there, it's funny because I would get cold. (laughs) And now in the winter, when it's the temperatures that I felt cold there, if I'm in like a tank top and shorts. (laughs) Yeah. The acclimation thing. That's why I get annoyed like on online when people are like making fun of other people for being intolerant or whatever because we acclimate physically yeah. and it's it's all perspective so you know it's you can't really compare no it's just and when I went back I still got cold because it I feel like it's a different kind of chill because you're right on the ocean and the it's breezy all the time and so you're getting that wind chill and it the temperature drops so much from the day to the night there that it always feels cold at night to me unless it's the middle of summer yeah like yesterday it was 70 during the day or 70 like three and then it was low 40s it was like 42 was the lowest that's a you huge know? change yeah so and the body goes <laughs> i don't like this yeah uh, too fast yeah i do feel like when i go other places that have like different um like different types of humidity and stuff like that it makes like a big difference in terms of like how it feels and impacts me and stuff you know like like I do better with dry heat than humid heat like humid heat all I can get heat sickness pretty easily um and then but but when you have humidity at lower temperatures it tends to feel a little warmer it's not as you know biting Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then once it gets to a certain temperature it all feels the same (laughs) yep (laughs) <laughs> once it gets cold enough <laughs> oh, it's and I did get used to it faster than I thought I would moving here but it'll be in the negatives for months at a time like without getting above zero uh, Fahrenheit guys Fahrenheit since we have all countries here and we're weird and use Fahrenheit <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's even colder <laughs> than zero <laughs> uh, and I think at 40, negative 40 Fahrenheit and Celsius are the same. I don't remember. Like I that. know that I know they meet somewhere, somewhere around there, but I just don't remember. But yeah, it'll get to ne- the negative 30s and 40s for a while here. And I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. That just sounds scary. It sounds so intense. And you rely so much on like infrastructure and stuff to be like safe. Yeah. Weather like that. Yeah, that's why I'm glad the house is like really well insulated because the heat did go out a couple years ago during the winter and it stayed about 30 degrees warmer in the house than outside, which was still really cold, but (laughs) that's cold. Um, And I didn't go up to the attic because that was really cold and the basement always stays warm. So it's usually the same temperature all year. It's about like 65 if you don't have any um, heat going. So we just kind of go down there. <laughs> yeah. Hang out down there. It's thaw out. Yeah. I uh, I need like one of the things I want to do with the RV is like rip the underbelly out. And that means removing all the insulation and stuff. And so I've been researching like different types of insulation that I can put in there and and stuff just to you know keep it weatherized Mm -hmm. as much as you can for like a thin box but um also maybe something that's not so attractive to mice um I if I could redo my insulation I would do what I was originally going to do and use marine insulation it doesn't attract rodents as much it's thicker it also um takes the moisture away from the walls and so you don't have that mold issue yeah um so that was my biggest thing is rust and mold and marine insulation is the best for preventing those i should look into that i was reading them but i kept getting information on house insulation i was like well that doesn't work like like hemp is really good because mice hate it um so in a house you either do the blown in kind which they they will not nest in or hemp they also don't like but the issue is like with hemp, I couldn't use that because if it ever got wet, because it's mm-hmm. just it's just sitting on a mesh layer, um, it stops being as effective when it's wet. That um, makes sense. 
yeah so but yeah i'll look at the marine stuff because that might be it's, that might be an option it's not the same texture it's more foamy and thick but yeah. um of course because it's marine so you don't want it to be porous yeah but yeah that's if i redo it ever that's what i'm gonna do nice yeah yeah <laughs> I so many I know things, things. <laughs> <laughs> you know some things and I know some things and then combined we know some more things yeah things. and being in so many of the RV groups that I'm in I learned that the same thing really does not work for everybody it depends on how you're going to use it um and I don't know like climate yeah. wise because I go to a lot of cold places so I need better like good insulation for cold and some people travel for the heat and they need good insulation that's going to keep them cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you get really good insulation, it's good at both. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, or dry I'm a big or fan wet. of, yeah, I'm a, yeah, the wet would, the dry and the wet would be like a big one. I'm a big fan of like preventative and like weatherizing and like, you know, so you know, the RV tech guy was like, well, you could just pull the underbelly off and just not put it back on. And then you won't have to worry about mice like nesting in there. And I was like, then I won't have insulation. And um, what happens if I transport the RV and a rock bounces up and hits like one of my tanks or something? Because yeah. that's all, all, to, all open to the air there. I was like, how about no? <laughs> <laughs> um to the extra work and I, i'll i was like i will find insulation mice don't like and i'll just use that you yeah. know i wonder if you did like a layer of hemp and then the other insulation if they would still not like it i don't know or sprinkle it in yeah they, you know, um, they'd probably just avoid the one layer and go for the other. But I was thinking like wor worst case, like I wasn't, I didn't look at the Marine, the Marine, okay, brain, Marine stuff didn't come up at all. But, um, you know, there's the insulation that looks like bubble wrap. Yeah. yeah. But it's not, I, I was almost thinking, use, yeah, I was thinking about, um, I could always just do a couple layers of that. Um, or there's some beefy versions of that and just do that. If that I can't sense. find anything better, I am going to do it for the windows. I have it on my wish list. Mm -hmm. um, so if I, and I got, um, I added like little Velcro buttons to my wish list as well. And so I can just like Velcro it up when I need it and then oh, pop it off as. That's a great idea. <laughs> oh. And then, and then I'll just, you know, it's just there. I still want to put the blinds back up. So I'll have both. But that, but the blinds are good for privacy, and they are insulated. They they do work, but I want like I want more insulation. Yeah, I like that idea. Now I'm thinking about my RV. <laughs> <laughs> I just I... was like, what's gonna keep it, especially with a cat? You know, like mm -hmm. what's gonna keep it up there, and then and then I can just pop them off when I don't need them and put them in storage, and then pop them out when the weather needs it again. And yeah, because I had my insulation. I think I talked about this before, but my insulation was up and I didn't do the um, siding over the insulation yet because I wanted to see if there were any issues with moisture or anything before I did that. So it was just the insulation and my cats were clawing at it. I'm like, stop it. <laughs> yeah. Monsters. Yeah. The, uh, I think I, did I send you the picture of Amos climbing the, the valance? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he's been like, like he just bolts from one end to the other, the RV going, rawr, 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 and then he like jumps at the valance and like, you know, grabs them. And I'm just like, oh, what happens when I remove those? Because there's not going to be anything for you to grab. He's probably going to try it once and fail miserably and be like, oh, that took my toy yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they weren't so hideous, I would leave one for him, but they're, I can't, I can't abide. No. Yeah. I, Fiona is so lazy. Like she doesn't, she likes to be high, but she doesn't like climbing all over things, but milf potato, <laughs> a little acrobat. And <laughs> although milf potato has been kind of lazy the last few days, maybe it's the weather changing and it's been rainy. I'm a, uh, 
I'm low key worried that there'll be noise going into the mic when I touch the table, but I'm hoping the arm will. I don't hear it that. on my end. Yeah, I'll test it later and make sure. But because I like I fidget too much. I was going to show the balance. I can I can move yeah. my my camera show and us. then people can see. Show us the <gasps> RV. Oh, there we go. And the, and the, they look like curtains, but they're actually like solid wood blocks with, um, like cushioned stuff on them. They're they're I you know yeah I my I one of my TikTok friends was in the area recently, and um he helped move on Sunday, which was awesome, and he comes in he goes oh those are wonderful, and I was like no they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though, so I have a friend. His name's Ian Watson. 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 And I'm sure he does not listen to my podcast, but he converted a coach bus into an RV. And those would actually go really well in his coach bus because it's very like late 1800s, early 1900s, the way he does decorated it and designed it and everything and it's very cool and those would probably go well in there yeah I like aesthetic stuff when it's in someone else's space mm -hmm. but when it's my space I like very simple clean lines and just not really I don't really like even like the wood color on the like all there's so much wood color in here and I find it like oppressive it's like too much are you gonna like cut whatever cover it or paint it. I might I might eventually um I have a, like too many repairs that need to be done that cost money for me to really think about that but there there is like wood paneling um and I was thinking about painting that at some point and um and then I was thinking about painting um over the the wallpaper um cuz I think that would like clean it up and it might make the wood more tolerable if if the rest of it isn't the sort of dingy off white color. True. Um, so yeah, so I was thinking about doing that in here, just do like a good, good bone white. And then in the back, I was thinking about doing like a light, a light blue in the bedroom. I like blue. Yeah. blue I like, happy. I did like an accent wall in my house when I had a house and it was blue, like cookie monster blue. And it was awesome. Cause it was like a really high ceiling. So mm -hmm. I really liked the way it looked. Uh, that's similar to the color I did in the kitchen. Uh, not my, my main kitchen, but the one in the basement. I did it like blue and white, like uh, grease. And it's, it, it's cookie monster blue for sure. Nice. <laughs> it's, bi it's biscuit blue, like my puppet. <laughs> oh, yes. And I named a biscuit because, like, that's the UK word for cookie. I love it. <laughs> so dignified. <laughs> His eyes. Woo. I'm wearing shorts, guys. So if you see my, <laughs> <laughs> I can't sit still. My hips my, are getting mad. My friend found uh, some clown clowny costume. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> See, now you guys have to go to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, some clowny shoes for me. She's going to send them to me. So, and I want to, I want to, they're big and like, yeah, they'll match this, but I want to wear them with something sexy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, so it just it. does not work at all. Like I don't ever want to wear them with the right thing. Oh my gosh. This makes me happy. I'm imagining. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get the foot fetish people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like you know Fridays are foot Friday uh, on my only fans and I don't really have like foot fetish people but I do it anyways because it's it's interesting to me to take pictures of my feet I have a foot aversion I like uh -huh. you know so it's an interesting challenge for me it's funny because I don't feel like I have foot fetish people on mine but at the pole at the top of mine a big chunk of them said they wanted more pictures of feet oh <laughs> But no one ever likes or comments on them. So I'm assuming the people who want that are the ones who are just watching. 
Yeah, maybe there's like a shame component to it because it's culturally there's so you know never mind the fact people foot fetishes literally don't have a choice. It has to do with brain wiring and the fact that that stuff is so close to the sex sex wiring area. So like yeah. it's just it's just a miswiring and you can't do anything about it. So just embrace it. Nope. You know, have fun. Yeah, exactly. I have no problem with them liking my feet. Yeah, I- I'll never see them that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'd like, as long as they don't expect me to like their feet, I'm, I'm all good. That's, that's really like the boundary in making content in general, that that's when I get like annoyed with people is when they want, when I'm sharing, you can enjoy what I'm sharing, but then they want to share back. And I'm like, no, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's very one-sided for me. I'm not like you know I don't want pictures in return I don't want to see your feed I don't have to pay me to send me pictures exactly well (laughs) even then I'm not sure I guess it depends on how much they offered but I had someone subscribe and then they unsubscribed after I said I didn't want pictures of them like pleasuring themselves and I was like we're not in a relationship I'm not interested (laughs) yeah exactly bye I don't get it very often but I have gotten quite like over the years that I've done it, I've gotten a few that have asked me and they always ask first, which I've never had anyone on there not ask first. And, Same. um, and I appreciate that. And majority of the time I've said yes. And then sent my price list. <laughs> like, if you want me to review it, I'll review it for you. It's going to be 25 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I just straight up was like, look, I'm, I'm asexual and yeah. you want me to look at something that's going to do absolutely nothing for me because I'm not connected to you. And so, and I'm not a lot, I can't, I can't yeah. um, demure. I can't fake it. Right. And be like, Oh, that's so hot. Like it just, I can't, you know, um, right. Grayson and I, the person I record or yeah, did the interview with this morning, um, which we'll post before this. So the doll girl, <laughs> Uh, we were talking about lying and like faking it and stuff too. And I was talking about how you and I don't, don't like doing that very much. Yeah. I get, literally, I can't, I mean, it's, it's, I real I know sometimes people's egos like are looking for certain things and I'll just straight up be like, I'm sorry, but I'm not, I'm not wired that way. You're going to get a very authentic reaction from me. And if you don't know how to read that to get what you need, like, I suggest you go away, like, because I can't, you know. Oh, wait, my camera didn't go on. There we go. <laughs> that was perfect, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, we take sc- we take pictures sometimes for you. <laughs> um, no, yeah, no, totally. It's not going to be... For me, I can play a character. So that's a little bit of a difference, is I can get into a character and be that person and I think it's because I was taught to mask so much growing up that I can get into I compartmentalize into that box yeah I can see you when you do that in your content and I find it it's like it it makes your content very fascinating to me because like I cannot do that but I can literally see that you're in a different gear and you're you've put a mask on and I, I sometimes I wish I could do that because I feel like if I could do that, sometimes when I would like to give people the interaction that they're seeking um, and I can't, you know, it would be nice to, you know, but I literally, when I try, I get the anxiety is, it's awful. So yeah, I just not worth it. Yeah. You do it a little bit though, not necessarily in any speaking type role, but like in some of your content that you make. And I feel like you do it well. Um, when you do put a face on like a legit like clown mask clown makeup on and you're able to get into a character or do like there's well, like your I'm really careful change. yeah but I also think my facial expressions are accented with the makeup so it's not as because like I was watching my RV noob stuff and I make a lot of the same faces um, and they're just not as noticeable without the makeup but uh 
but I actually like when I select sounds, they have to align with how I feel and think about things. I can't like I've done a few videos where the sounds were not really how I feel or not really how I think about things. And I posted them and I was anxious and so uncomfortable afterwards. So like there's still it's still, you know, even there, like I I'm be careful. I am more like physically expressive. Mm -hmm. Um but I used to be like that. I think we talked about that. I used to be like that all the time. And then it's just, it's just guarding my energy. So I actually plan, I'll have a couple of rest days before I make content, knowing that I'm going to expend all this energy. And then I, I have a couple of rest days after. Um, that makes sense. And, and as, yeah. as my battery is getting a little better, like over the last couple of years, I've become more expressive uh, on average, which is nice. Like it feels a little more like me, but yeah. Uh, Al, Alan was listening to one of your episodes today. I think it was episode oh, I forget 21? which one. 21. I think it was episode yeah. about going to the bath, about the toilet. Yeah. And he wrote me, he's like, I'm loving this episode. This is probably my favorite one. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember what I say in my episode. So I don't know. What about the toilet? What was it? Uh, but let me see. Cause he's like, do you think that she'd be okay with me sending her a message saying this? I'm like, I don't know, but I could tell her because I, I know that you're you're coming across nice. So yeah. Alan, I he, hope you don't mind me saying it in this. He, he left a comment on my Patreon saying that the episode he was like laughing a lot and stuff. And I love oh. like seriously, like to anybody who's ever like, I would like to say something to Lee, but I'm not sure. I love all input. I am okay. like fascinated by other people's like perspectives and stuff because like it. I actually will take that information and add it to what I'm doing. And it it helps me see myself from the outside. He so. said that he felt like on your Patreon, I think it was on your Patreon. I'm not sure which, which form of social media is like, I feel like she felt comfortable out of her mask talking to me a little bit. And I don't know if she'd be offended by me saying that, but it felt good. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> um, I was like, I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know what's <laughs> offensive or not. Yeah. I I I would say my response to that would be that he hasn't talked to me enough to get a sense of what my average personality mm -hmm. is like. So he's probably he probably got me at like this one moment and then, you know, and then over time it, it would become a rounded thing of like, oh, OK, there's this and there's that. And yeah, I don't um I don't mask that much like. Anymore. Um in that you know in a way that really changes yeah it's it's just my moods or my energy levels or yeah he's he's pretty good like we have very we have a little bit different like political views and stuff but they're not super they're not like polarized but just different and we've had some tips in the past because I am not good at like pretending or being like oh let's meet in the middle no I don't agree with you on this <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've gotten some tips but we always get over it I've I think we've been talking for like two and a half years three years now and we met on TikTok I think <laughs> that's but yeah cool. he's cool yeah he seems he seems really nice like I, we haven't talked that much yet but I really appreciate that he takes the time to listen and then actually like comments on stuff like that's like I don't think people realize how powerful that is oh you know totally because when we feel like like we can see that people are watching or people are at least have it on and seeing it yeah. or views or different things, but we don't know how people are receiving it. Like, are they hating it? Is that why they're watching? Are they? Yeah. <laughs> That's they that like different? walking in a room where everybody's staring at you and nobody like emotes. That's what it feels like sometimes, you know, and it can be like, like it means that we have to rely on our own interpretations of our whatever we made yep. to keep motivating ourselves and sometimes that can be really really hard like you know like getting the comments on only fans is like so much Huge. like I'm so I'm so excited <laughs> to start making content again whereas before I was kind of thinking about quitting and now I'm like oh I'm getting comments this is awesome I want to do more you know um and I got some requests that a couple months ago and I've been like they're sitting there in my brain just percolating until I'm in a situation where I can do them and which will be soon Yes. I got to figure out how to co uh, co coordinate hand puppets with saucy. 
saucy head. <laughs> ah! Now I want to make some lingerie for him. <laughs> I think I could sew that because it wouldn't have to be perfect. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have two hand puppets that their eyes are too weird to use on TikTok videos. So I'm just saving them for for taking pictures for that request. And uh, they're literally like like sock socks with like big heads with big, big brown mouths and eyes. So they should they should be fun. Our guest that we're about to record with is sexy me. I was just like, don't be alarmed wearing costume. <laughs> Um, so yes, we will have this episode and then, um, we're going to wrap this one up here shortly and we're going to have another one that we're recording in our same outfit. So don't be alarmed. We're not wearing them two days in a row. Cause that's gross, right? So gross. <laughs> <laughs> I wear my clothes for days I on know. end. Like, I do too. <laughs> I and that's why I only do a load of laundry a week. That's it. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I have her <laughs> email address here. So yeah, we'll, we'll spend the next five minutes wrapping up here and then we're going to record some more with a guest. Her name is Kayla. Oh, Kay- Kay- oh my gosh. She- Kayla. Kayla. I hope I'm saying that right. We're going to have her say her name. <laughs> it's, spelled, <laughs> it's spelled different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we, um, appreciate you guys and we did this little impromptu before before recording with her episode for you guys so that we can have a little fun and be in our costumes and we'll we'll probably be in costumes again and maybe on Monday (laughs) yeah (laughs) I have more costumes I can wear I'll wear the other side of this one I'll wear the like red dress oh yeah be salsa salsa and uh yeah so but yes I as always we really really appreciate you um the support that we've gotten on Patreon on different social medias that we're trying to get better about posting on uh <laughs> on here so, on TikTok speak, I'm like speak for yourself I <laughs> know I'm so bad Lee's like hey look at this thing I posted on on Twitter x (laughs) and i'm like oh my gosh i haven't been on there in like two weeks i'm so sorry yeah (laughs) then i go on and repost all of lee's stuff that's my whole page (laughs) that's good (laughs) follow us on twitter x yeah i post i try to post different stuff everywhere there's a little overlap but like Mm -hmm. so there's like there's a reason to follow me in each place Yes, exactly. It is different. And I, I have been, I made a Facebook page and I have sent a link out to a lot of people, but I have not been good about going on there either. I need to make you a moderator on there. (laughs) Yeah. I, um, my Facebook's probably my weakest one because it's tied into my Instagram. So it's literally just cross posted, but nobody engages there. So that's why I used to make posts there, but nobody engages. And it's not like, it's not worth my time. If no one's going to see it anyway. Is it's so slow going on there where other like forms of social media, like Instagram and TikTok, people have automatically gotten engaged with it where I've tried to post like, what's your favorite dinosaur and stuff on there. And everyone's like, just like that see yeah um yeah. I, I, I had cricket sounds in my head sorry yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and then like I finally saw your post probably like a week later yeah. and I was like you're my favorite dinosaur <laughs> and then uh, it's so sucky because we're uh, some guests that we're going to have on that we're going to collaborate with we're going to be on their podcast and they're going to be on ours and I believe that was on the 12th of November is when we're recording with them. I'd have to double check. It's on my calendar. But mm-hmm. we, so they have a Facebook group and they had to do so much promoting to get movement on it. And then they finally, after they had a thousand followers, it started growing and getting more interactive, but it took a lot. And I'm like, I don't know if I have the energy to do what they did to promote that. Yeah. If it's not organic, I'm not, it's just not going to happen for me. So, and I've already done so much to promote the podcast in general. (laughs) Yeah. Promoting another page for the podcast is a lot. And I already have Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. (laughs) Yeah. It seems like it, your, 
the promoting works though, like, cause you have enough of a outreach, like enough outreach isn't the right word, but you, you have enough people to connected. Arms. Yeah. So that's like been working and I always post stuff and like repost. I post for mine too, but nobody ever sees it. It's yeah. Weird. yours. Like, I need to start posting yours more because I see yours days later that have to do with your GoFundMe or your podcast. And so I'm like, why? I see your other posts. And like, yeah. So it's like definitely it's, like suppressed for some reason. It's the algorithms everywhere just don't like me. They, you know, you're the redheaded step clown. Yep. Yep. Redheaded step clown. <laughs> but thank you guys. I should get off here so I can send her a link real quick. Uh, we're texting right now, so I know she's ready. And we will see you shortly on the other episode, a week later for you guys. But for us, it's right away. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye.